How often do you upgrade your computer? Every two years or five. Every machine left behind contains dozens of precious metals. Materials once mined through sweat and immense energy. Yet inside recycling plants worth over $700 billion, those metals are reborn, transforming waste into resources for the future. What once seemed like useless scrap is now the beginning of a new life cycle. Through collection, sorting, and smelting at temperatures of several thousand degrees, metals are restored to their original form, bright, strong, and pure. In this video, we'll explore how humanity turns metal waste into valuable resources, proving that true worth lies not in what's new, but in what can be reborn. A metal collection yard might look like nothing more than a massive scrapyard, but behind the dust and the clang of steel lies a complex and highly strategic logistic system. On a global scale, this network of collection and storage sites helps save more than 400 million tons of iron ore every year, equivalent to hundreds of billions of dollars in mining, transportation, and waste treatment costs. The scrap brought to these collection sites comes from a wide range of everyday items. Old vehicles, broken washing machines, discarded laptops, and other used appliances. Each one contains valuable metals that, when properly recovered, can be reintroduced into the industrial cycle. Each collection site is designed as a technical hub equipped with a receiving area, weighbridge, storage yard, and inspection station. Trucks carrying scrap metal must pass through 60-ton electronic scales to record precise intake weights. Some modern centers even use RFID tracking technology to monitor every shipment and prevent the loss of valuable materials like copper, aluminum, or nickel. The purpose of these facilities goes far beyond domestic recycling. Countries such as Japan, Germany, and South Korea treat them as key links in the global trade of recycled metals. After being stored, the scrap is compressed into bales and shipped by sea, accounting for 30-40% of the world's recycled metal flow. Every year, tens of millions of tons of scrap steel are exported from the United States to India, Turkey and Vietnam for secondary steelmaking. From an environmental standpoint, well-managed collection sites can reduce solid waste and toxic emissions by up to 70% compared with landfill or incineration. Advanced yards also recycle wash water and capture fine metal dust through cyclone filters, conserving resources while minimizing pollution. Few people realize that each ton of properly collected scrap metal prevents more than two tons of CO2 emissions, partially offsetting the carbon footprint of the steel industry. That's why this seemingly simple stage acts as the first line of defense for the green economy, safeguarding resources and easing the planet's environmental burden. Viewed on a broader scale, these metal collection yards don't just gather steel, they gather energy, value, and the future of a circular industrial world. At the collection site, once intake procedures are complete, large-sized scrap materials, such as dismantled car frames, industrial machine housings, broken household appliances, or oversized metal sheets, are fed into high-pressure hydraulic compactors to reduce volume and standardized shape for transport. Due to their irregular shapes and bulky nature, these items pose significant challenges in storage and logistics if left unprocessed. The compactor presses them into uniform cube-shaped bales, typically measuring 24 to 40 inches per side, maximizing container or truck space. Modern compaction systems can generate up to 3,000 psi of pressure, compressing hundreds of pounds of metal into a dense, solid block within minutes. In large-scale yards, automated conveyors, weight sensors, and mechanical handling arms are integrated into the line to boost efficiency and enhance worker safety. Beyond saving space, compacted bales also minimize risks of fire, explosion, or mechanical hazards during transport, as the tight compression eliminates voids that could trap gas, oil, or faulty batteries. Each bale is labeled, tagged, and loaded onto specialized vehicles, ready for the next leg of its journey toward the recycling plant. Thanks to this seemingly simple step, scrap metal once chaotic and unwieldy 
is now reshaped into a compact, manageable form. A perfect prelude to the precise and sustainable regeneration process that lies ahead. After being compacted or sent directly from the collection site, medium to small size scrap metal enters the shredding line where its original form is completely destroyed in preparation for precise downstream separation. At the heart of the process is a high-speed hammer mill or rotary shredder capable of handling a wide variety of materials such as machine frames, electric motors, car bodies, metal containers, and mixed material components. Once inside the crushing chamber, heavy hammers spinning at 5 to 2,000 RPM repeatedly strike the scrap, tearing it down into fragments just a few inches or even millimeters in size. To ensure efficiency, the system includes vibrating feeders, metal sensors, screening meshes, and high-pressure suction fans, all working together to control output size, remove contaminants, and prevent mechanical overload. Depending on the design, each line can process 5 to 100 tons of scrap per hour with smart load balancing that adjusts power automatically. Beyond volume reduction, shredding also breaks the physical bonds between metal and non-metal parts, such as copper wires in plastic insulation, steel cores inside motors, or printed circuit boards containing copper and tin. This step is essential for enabling accurate separation using magnets, eddy current systems, or air classification in the next phase. Right after leaving the shredder, the mixed stream of crushed materials, including ferrous and non-ferrous metals, moves on to the sorting belt, where a high-powered magnet performs the first critical separation, extracting iron and steel. Suspended above the conveyor, the magnet generates a strong magnetic field that pulls ferrous pieces out of the moving stream. These iron-rich fragments are diverted onto a secondary belt and sent to a separate collection bin. Depending on the facility setup, this can involve permanent magnets for continuous operation or electromagnets for adjustable intensity. Some advanced systems also feature magnetic sensors to detect weaker signals, recovering small items like screws, springs, or thin steel shells. Thanks to this method, magnetic separation achieves high recovery efficiency, minimizes metal loss, and lays the groundwork for deeper downstream refinement. After passing through automated systems like magnets and vibrating screens, a portion of the scrap remains too complex for machines to separate accurately. At this stage, human workers become the final filter, more precise and adaptable than any sensor. Under bright overhead lighting, workers operate in pairs or rows, using metal pickers, handheld scrapers, and compartmentalized sorting bins. They carefully examine the stream to extract mixed alloys, insulated wires, electronic boards, damaged batteries, or grease-contaminated parts, all of which could compromise an entire melt if left unchecked. Once the scrap metal has been thoroughly sorted by material type, it is fed into a furnace to be fully reprocessed into primary grade metal. Depending on the material, facilities use either an electric arc furnace, commonly for steel and cast iron, or an induction furnace for aluminum, copper, and zinc. These systems operate at temperatures reaching up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, allowing the metal to fully melt and homogenize. Inside the furnace, the molten metal is constantly stirred to even out the chemical composition and force lighter impurities to the surface as slag. This slag is then removed either automatically or by hand, ensuring that the resulting metal meets the required purity level. To fine-tune the chemical profile, operators may add specific refining agents such as silicon, quicklime, or manganese, depending on the desired output. The internal temperature is monitored by infrared sensors and regulated through automated controls, maintaining high efficiency while preventing breakdowns or unwanted oxidation. This stage not only delivers metal in liquid form that meets technical standards but also defines its strength, some ductility, and corrosion resistance for its next industrial life. At modern plants, fumes and dust produced during melting 
are captured by multi-stage filtration systems, which help reduce emissions and recover valuable byproducts like lead, tin, and zinc. When the molten metal reaches its target fluidity and chemical balance, it is either poured into casting molds or directed into a continuous casting line. From discarded fragments to purified form, the metal is now reborn, ready to begin a cleaner, stronger, and more sustainable chapter in the material cycle. Once the molten metal reaches the required purity and chemical composition, it is transferred to the casting section to be solidified into semi-finished forms suitable for downstream processing. Depending on the type of metal and the facility setup, this stage typically follows one of two routes, continuous casting, the industry standard for steel production, or ingot casting, which is more common in aluminum recycling and non-ferrous alloys. In steel recycling, Continuous casting is the most widely used method. Here, the molten steel is steadily poured into a water-cooled copper mold, where it begins to solidify from the outside in, while maintaining a controlled flow at the core. As the steel progresses through the mold, it is supported and guided by a series of rollers, allowing it to fully solidify as it moves downward. The resulting steel forms may be in the shape of billets, square cross-section, for rebar and structural products, slabs for flat steel production, or blooms for forging and mechanical applications. The entire process is monitored using thermal sensors, pressure detectors, and high-speed cameras to prevent defects such as gas porosity, hot cracking, or surface deformation. Once the steel has solidified, it is cut to standard lengths using oxy-fuel torches or high-pressure water jets and then sent to the cooling bed for natural temperature equalization. For aluminum, especially in recycled operations, the process often involves semi-continuous vertical casting or traditional ingot casting. The molten aluminum is poured into cast iron or steel molds that are cooled using circulating water. Because aluminum melts at a lower temperature, around 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit, and has very high thermal conductivity, the cooling rate must be carefully controlled to prevent surface cracking or gas entrapment. In vertical casting, the mold slowly descends as the metal solidifies, maintaining a stable casting environment and reducing internal stress. Once cooled, the aluminum ingots or slabs are trimmed to remove irregular edges and transferred to downstream operations such as rolling, extrusion, or remelting, depending on the intended use. Whether it's steel or aluminum, the casting phase marks a critical transformation, turning purified molten metal into solid, standardized forms that can be reintroduced into the industrial cycle. It is the technical bridge between regeneration and reuse, where recovered value is locked into shape, ready for a new chapter in manufacturing. Once the aluminum billets have been cast into ingots or slabs and completely cooled, they are transferred to the packaging area, where visual inspection, dimensional standardization, and physical protection are carried out before shipment. Here, each billet is measured for length, width, thickness, and individual weight using precision instruments, combined with surface inspection under angled lighting to detect defects such as hairline cracks, gas porosity, rough texture, or warping beyond permissible limits. The grouped billets are then wrapped in anti-oxidation oil paper or heat-shrinkable PE film, depending on storage time and climatic conditions. For products intended for further processing, such as rolling or extrusion, this protective layer also helps keep the surface clean and prevents damage from dust, moisture, or mechanical impact during transportation. Each ingot or billet cluster is tagged with a laser-engraved aluminum label or QR code, providing complete traceability data including batch number, alloy composition, production date, production line, and internal quality standards. Once packaging is complete, the pallets are numbered, coded, and loaded according to a weight distribution plan, ensuring balanced loads and safe, efficient unloading. As a result, the recycled aluminum billets are not only preserved in perfect condition, but also fully ready for the next industrial cycle, whether for rolling, extrusion, or remelting with complete traceability and compliance with international packaging standards. 
For recycled steel that has been cast, rolled, and shaped into final products, such as rebar, coils, or flat sheets, packaging serves as the final step before delivery to customers. Depending on the product type, the steel is bundled, coiled, or stacked in flat sheets, then securely fastened using galvanized steel straps or heavy-duty composite bands. Each unit is tagged with a water-resistant aluminum plate or label, clearly displaying the dimensions, steel grade, weight, rolling batch number, and mechanical standards. Hot-rolled steel coils are typically wrapped in rust-resistant paper or PE-coated tarpaulin providing moisture protection and surface preservation during outdoor transport. Bundles of construction rebar are padded with wooden blocks at both ends and loaded onto specialized trucks or low-bed containers, following strict loading capacity and handling orientation regulations. For domestic orders, the steel may be shipped loose, but must still be securely positioned and accompanied by a detailed packing list. From scraps that seem to have reached the end of their life, the metal recycling industry has forged a new journey, where steel and aluminum are not only reborn, but also become the backbone of millions of modern structures. Every cast aluminum ingot and rolled steel coil is more than just an industrial product. It's proof that materials can be revived when human ingenuity and technology come together. If you found this journey fascinating, let us know in the comments which product you'd like the factor in to explore next. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the stories of how the world is built, inch by inch.